welcome back everybody to NCAA 14 Dynasty Mode. It has been almost two and a half years since I last played this on my channel and I really wanted to return to it today with a brand new series which is going to be the Carolina Atlantic University Drakes which is a team builder team. Obviously you can't build team builders anymore because the website is down but I found this one and I really liked their uniforms, their logo, uh, their stadiums pretty cool as well that you saw in the intro but one thing that i changed about this team was that i made it in a team of entirely walk-ons and what you're watching on screen right now is me converting every single player on the roster to a punter and then cutting all the punters and then once you do that you sim a stage the game will automatically give you all the position needs that you need with all walk-ons so that's basically how I set up the team, and I did that to add some extra challenge. I think this team builder, when you download it off the uh, team builder thing, you it's like high 80s overall, which isn't very fun to start off with if you want to, you know, build a team from scratch. So by using all walk-ons, this team is going to be absolutely starting from scratch. It is going to be absolutely terrible, and season one, I'm probably going to try to get through as quickly as possible to get some actual, uh, sorry to say, talent on this team. So if you watch any other YouTubers who are still playing this game, they're doing pretty much the same thing I'm doing. They're starting off with the lowest possible overall team, building it from the ground up. So I wanted to do something a little different and add something to this series I haven't seen anyone else do, which is to use the draft class export feature to Madden 25 and then run a series on Madden 25 alongside this one to make sort of like a connected universe if you will and i haven't seen anyone try to do this i think it's a really cool idea and i think it's gonna be really fun when we get a few years into this to see you know if our players go pro if some of our rivals go pro and just see how their career ends up uh alongside this series so let's take a look at some of our players who are going to be playing in year number one starting off we have starting quarterback number 10 morris parker he's a 43 overall and he is a scrambling type quarterback, which is why he's the starter. He has like 70 something speed, which isn't great, but his accuracy or throw power isn't really isn't that great or anything that we can depend on to start with. So that running ability is going to be very useful for us. Backing him up is going to be number 13, PJ Roden. He's listed as a scrambler at 41 overall, but his speed, I think, is in the 50s or something. Like he's not going to see the field a lot. And I don't have any gameplay of him because I really doubt he's going to play a lot in year number one. So now we're just going to jump around to different positions. We have Jamal Griffin as our one of our starting wide receivers. He's 6'4", 220 pounds, 46 overall, and he makes a pretty good play here in practice. Next, we have Akeem Floyd, who's one of our starting cornerbacks, but he actually catches a pass here in practice because he is going to play some depth receiver for us as well. And he's a junior, so we're only going to have him for two years. Now we have Tyrone Anderson, who's going to be our other starting receiver. He's a 46 overall. And he's more of a balanced receiver. Next, we have our starting tight end, Eric Bishop. He's 46 overall freshman. And he's probably going to be one of our favorite targets, just as a short uh, underneath receiver. Now at halfback, we have our starter is going to be Alex Bean. He's a 48 overall. One of the best players overall-wise on our team. And then backing him up is going to be... Timmy Neal is a junior at 44 overall, but these guys are going to be pretty much only used in the passing game. Here's a look at our starting offensive line. Not going to spend a bunch of time on these guys since most of these guys are going to be replaced pretty quickly. So let's take a quick look at some of our defense. Starting at outside corners going to be Robert Stanford, a 45 overall. Then we have Andrew Hall at free safety. He's also a 45 overall. And then lining up next to him is going to be Derek Gross. He's going to be a 46 overall, one of our top-rated players. And then at linebacker, one of our starting two is going to be Chris Hill, 43 overall. And then on our interior defensive line, we're going to have Brandon Stevenson. And then lining up next to him is going to be Will Marshall. So I didn't get footage of every single defensive player, so we're just going to go through these kind of quick. At left end, we have Dave Williams, a 42 overall. Then we have JT Gandy lining up at right end at 50 overall. And then we have Thomas Bentley as our other linebacker in our 4-2-5 defense. He's a 44 overall. Then we have Joey Logan as our third cornerback. And then we can't forget about our fullback Joe Glover. He's probably going to be used in a lot of short yard situations. And then we have both our kicker and our punter at Matt Long. 
So that's a full look at our starting team. So let's take a look at our schedule for year number one. To generate this schedule, I just randomized a team from every single conference because we are playing in independence, so we can play whoever we want. I just took a random team from every single conference, and the two teams that I added to finish off the schedule were Notre Dame, which is uh, number two in the country right now, and then I also added Georgia Southern, and they're number nine overall, and that's only a uh, strength of schedule to be, so that's why I added two ranked opponents to uh, round out this schedule. So let's take a look at our very first opponent in Ball State. Probably one of our easiest games all year, but it's still going to be very tough considering our team is all in the 40s overall. They have a 96 overall left guard, Joe White, and you should keep him in mind because, again, this series is connected with the Madden 25 series, so we're most likely going to see him in the NFL next year. Starting at quarterback, they have Ray Cronin at 86 overall, and then they have some other players here in the you know, mid mid 80s which is still going to pose a problem for us john colbert is looking to improve upon his last season at tight end and then we have Jarrett gutierrez who's probably going to run all over us he had 12 touchdowns last year thousand yard rushing season and he's going to have a field day with our defense so welcome everybody to game day as we are set to see the debut of our carolina atlantic university drakes as we are just moments away from kickoff here at Aviator Stadium. We're going to be starting off this year at home. And not a lot of fans in the stadium. And that's kind of to be expected. There's not a lot of hype around this team right now. The newest team being added to the FBS. As there's a 60 overall gap between Ball State, our opponent, and us sitting at 21 overall. And in year number one, we're mostly just looking for things that we can take forward into year number two. Mostly learning our offense and learning maybe if we have some players that might emerge as Andrew Hall is back to return as we are underway for our first ever game he's going to run it past the 20 down about the 22 and coaching this team is Keith Hale returning from our Rutgers series he is going to be making his first ever coaching appearance right now as Morris Parker is standing in the backfield at quarterback to his right is Alex Bean. He's going to take the first handoff, and that's going to be a loss of one. Now Morris Parker ready to throw, throwing over the middle to the tight end, and he's going to wildly overthrow it. And this is pretty much what we're going to be seeing all year. So third down and 11. Can we convert our first third down? Matt Frank's going to catch it on the outside. He's going to break two tackles, and he's going to pick up the first down. Matt Frank, the backup tight end on that play. Gets us a new set of downs, now throwing to the outside. Here's Alex Bean. He's going to be met by the defender and brought down for a gain of five. Parker now dropping back on second down, throwing over the middle to Bean, who's going to be tackled just shy of the first down. Third and inches here. Now Parker's going to take it for himself, running to the side, breaking off one. And we can pick up another first down. And as now we're approaching midfield. Parker on first down is going to be throwing to the right to Jamal Griffin, and he's just going to straight up drop it. Not a lot of our receivers have very good hands. Here's Bean getting another catch on the outside on the screen play. He's going to break a tackle and pick up a first down at the opponent's 40. And here's backup running back Timmy Neal. He's going to take it on first down, spinning to the side, and a good pickup of six yards there. Third down and four, Parker looking to throw. He's going to throw onto the side, looking for Timmy Neal in the flats but not a very good uh, throw by Morris Parker there now on fourth down throwing over to the side no separation everyone covered downfield that's going to be intercepted and with no one able to tackle the linebacker here he's going to take it all the way our first points allowed is going to be a pick six Ray Keller the middle linebacker gets ball state on the board so attempt number two let's see if we can improve we were moving the ball pretty well down the field but a mistake in the throw leads to us being down by seven. So here's Bean on the handoff, running to the left. No room at all there as there was five Ball State defenders tackling him down for a loss of three. Here's Parker trying to get out of the pocket. He's not going to be able to. Sacked for a loss of six by Ray Keller, who just got the pick six. Parker, third down and 19. He's going to throw to the left. This is actually our free safety, Andrew Hall, who had the catch, but not enough yards for the first down here's ball state their first look on offense as nelson's going to catch this one and gain 11 on the left 
Ray Cronin is their starting quarterback because he's going to throw to the right. Here's Todd Nelson getting a gain of 21, making it look easy for him. Cronin now trying to scramble outside the pocket. He's not going to be able to escape, tackled by our linebacker. Third down and 10 for Cronin, setting up the screen. He's going to be Gutierrez. He has a block downfield, gets a second block, and he runs into his own guy. That should have been a house call. Even a first down. They don't get either. It's a fourth down in inches. Can we get our first stop? A completely whiff tackle in the backfield leads to Ball State scoring another touchdown as Cronin runs this one in. And here's a look. Or here we are back on offense with our Drakes as they throw to the left to Alex Bean. Only a gain of four on that one. Second down and six for Parker. He's going to try to roll out. Throws this one to Timmy Neal outside in the flats. He's going to pick up a few on this one. Now it's a third down and three situation. Throwing over to her side to Eric Bishop. He's going to gain eight on that one. Picking up the first down. Now here's Curtis Weaver off the slant. A nice gain of 15 on that one. And as you can see, we're getting some good offensive production out of this team. We just uh, had the one mistake. And obviously our defense is not really playing well at all in this first quarter. And now we're in the second quarter. Let's see if we can see what we can do here. Pierce Parker for a gain of seven. Now second down and three. Alex Bean up the middle, diving forward. And that is going to be enough for the first down. Now in Ball, Tate, Ball State territory, here's Eric Bishop. Gain of eight on the left. Pick leading us to a third down and three. Parker trying to find someone open. Wildly overthrown that time. Trying to find Andrew Hall. Fourth down and three. Might as well go for it. And we're going to actually pick this up. Timmy Neal catches a gain of seven. As we're nearing the red zone here, Parker trying to go over the middle, nearly intercepted. That could have been bad. Fourth down and 13. And we're going to try out our kicker here. So here is Matt Long from 45. The kick is up. And we score our first points ever. Three on the board, and that is just about his max range. As this one just barely got over the bar from 45 yards. Ball State back on offense. Cronin's gonna pass the left to Colbert, pick up 10. That's gonna lead us to a second and five. Cronin's gonna take it this time. Can't get tackled by Andrew Hall. Picks up the first down. Now here's Cronin throwing over the middle to Quinn. Picks up eight, leading to a uh, third and short. And Gutierrez gets tripped up for a second, but still picks it up. Still manages to get that first down. Now here he is running again. Just fighting off everyone. Gain of 15 on that one. Bringing them into Drake's territory. Now Gutierrez running to the side. Picks up a block downfield. One man left to beat. He's going to be tackled at the 10-yard line. 25 yards there. Gutierrez, here he is again. He's not even lost any energy. Touchdown from an 11-yard run. So that's going to lead to Ball State 21. Carolina Atlantic 3. As the one fan in the stand goes crazy for Ball State, but I cannot wait to get a good run defense as Gutierrez just ran for like 80 yards on that drive. That was insane. Didn't even have to come off the field. Here's Floyd on the kick return. Going to bounce it outside. Pretty good return for us getting to about the 36. But we fail on our first two plays of the drive. Third down and 11. Parker doesn't have enough gas on that one. That one's going to be deflected down. And we're going to have to punt. And now here's Ball State back at the 50. Cronin's just going to run this one up the middle. Somehow does not stumble. And there's a flag down on that play. Personal foul. Clipping. Offense. And they're actually going to be hit with the clipping call. So that's going to negate that huge run for them. Minute 30 left. So we're just trying to keep them from scoring again. Cronin on second down is going to throw to Quinn on the screen. Running up the middle. And he's going to gain about 10 there. Now another third down and short situation. Crone's going to throw. He has a man wide open in Colbert. That's going to be another gain of 10. Minute left now. As Crone's just going to run to the side this time. He's going to be brought down. Maybe in the backfield. Maybe not by Nick Lover, our defensive tackle. Here's now Cronin going to the end zone to Powell. And he just beats Robert Stanford on the left. Wasn't even close. Just gets the easy touchdown before halftime. Now we're leading to a 45 second. Let's see if we can do anything here. Spark's going to take the, this one. They're going to defend the triple option perfectly on that one. 24 seconds left. And we're going to have to punt again. 
as we were only able to use like 20 seconds on that drive. Now here's Gross on the kick return. He breaks one tackle, breaks a second tackle. Now here comes the third tackle, doesn't get him down, and they just scored. How did that just happen? We were, we just had the ball left with 40 seconds and then had to kick it away, and they scored. And that's just really depressing as the boos ring out in the stadium. Ball State leads 35-3 to at halftime. As we're probably just going to kind of go through the rest of this game kind of quick. As here goes Gutierrez with a huge hole up the middle into... Drake's territory. Here comes Gutierrez again running to the left and then no one's just going to catch him. Get out of the way, ref. That's going to be another Ball State touchdown. 47. They're just making it look easy now as our players probably a bit gassed from playing defense all day. Here's Glover with a gain of five. Parker now on third down and five and McNeil's just going to break on that one. Came across the middle. I don't think Parker ever saw him. As that's going to be a pick six as this game has turned south. As you can see, just perfectly read that play, and there was really nothing we could do about that. It's now 49-3, Ball State, as P.J. Roden enters the game. As Parker has thrown two interceptions. So we're going to try out Roden. I think he has a better arm and a little bit better accuracy, but he has, like, absolutely no mobility as he throws this one to Anderson, who drops it. Here's Roden trying to run out of the pocket third down. And he's just going to throw that one away, leading to Ball State to have the ball again. Second down and five. Quinn wide open over the middle. Stiff arms his way for like an extra 10 yards down in the middle. What is going on here? Cronin now going to run. Breaks another tackle. Finally brought down at the 20. Here's Cronin again all day to throw. He's just going to run right up the middle. Runs into his own guy. Gross can't bring him down. Down within the five. It just took like five guys to bring down Ray Cronin. Now he's first and goal from the five. Pitches it out to Gutierrez. What is that, like, touchdown number four on the day? This is getting insane. I mean, we are a team of all walk-ons, but this is just ridiculous, especially to a Ball State team. This is going to be a long season. 56-3. to three. Ball State gets the ball back pretty quick. Here's Gutierrez breaking free again. Another gain of 19. Here goes back up running back, I guess. Gross. He's going to break two tackles. He gets his own gain of nine. Now with a third down and one. Gutierrez back in the game. There's no one even in front of him. 15 yards to the house. I think that's his fourth touchdown. I think I said fourth last time, but I believe that's his fourth. 63-3 to three at the end of the third. As man, this is going to be a long season. As now we're in the fourth quarter, watching the Ball State offense again as we just cannot do anything with our offense. Here's Tom Quinn with a catch of 14 yards. Gutierrez now run to the side, breaks a tackle. Another missed tackle, breaks a third, and is finally brought down. Another gain of 16. Here's Gross running up the middle, broken tackle, touchdown. Ball State. It's now 70-3. to This is just getting ridiculous. There's still seven minutes left in this game, but we're going to skip forward. Just kind of get out of this game. He's here Cronin. Late in this game, another garbage time touchdown. 77-3 to is your final score. That was really painful, but hopefully we will get something going here in season number one. And after that abysmal performance, I decided to give one player on each side of our ball a little bit of like a two overall boost. And I'm going to be doing that at the end of each game. Depends on who gets the player of the game. But you see Parker, two interceptions. No one was able to run the ball for more than five yards in this game for us. As Glover led the team in rushing, that's pretty pathetic. Now looking at receiving, Eric Bishop, four catches, 36 yards, is going to be our top receiver in this one. No one else really did anything spectacular. But Griffin and Weaver had a gain of 15. Now looking at our defense, Derek Grove led our team in tackles with a 6. Duncan and Hill had a tackle for loss. No sacks in this game. No picks or anything like that. No turnovers at all. And then Matt Long, our only points on the day. 1 for 1 for 45 and then he also punted the ball for 250 yards. And then Glover got a punt because I messed up the depth chart. But Ray Cronin for them, 16 of 20, 208, one touchdown. Gutierrez, 180 yards, four touchdowns. Felt like a lot more than that. 
but Cronin also ran for 70 and two touchdowns, and then Gross also ran for 40 yards and a touchdown. Tom Quid had a 100-yard game, and then Powell had the touchdown, the one lone receiving touchdown, as Carey led their team in tackles with seven. A bunch of players got tackle for losses, but Maurice Marshall had five tackles for losses. That's a pretty good day for him. And then only one sack on the day by Ray Keller, two interceptions by Keller, and then McNeil on that unfortunate <laughs> crossing route. And then Joe White, the player we talked about at the beginning, probably going to see him in the NFL with a seven-sack performance here in his uh, first game of his senior season. And then, just like I was saying, the two players are going to get at the boost are Matt Long and then Derek Rose. So they're going to get about two points in all their attributes, and hopefully that makes a little bit of a difference. It's not like a huge boost, but hopefully that kind of makes these games a little bit more competitive. That's kind of my goal. So he went from a 46 to a 50 overall after bumping up all his attributes. And then Matt Long goes from a 61 overall, and he's now up to a 63. So hopefully that boost can translate on the field. So let's look at recruiting. We're going to talk just about the quarterbacks today as we're targeting two right now in Chris Church and Steven Jude. And Chris Church, he's 6'5", 212 from Florida. A really good size. He's the number 34 quarterback in the country, but he has 57 speed. We know his speed and we know he has C in both of his throwing stats. Then we have Steven Jude who has C in his throwing stats, but also B speed. So actually, Steven Jude is my number one guy right now as we're only going to scout one stage for each player just to keep it fun in this series. And uh, Chris Church, we know he's not going to be mobile at all. So Steven Jude with a potential of 80 speed is going to be really good for us. And then we have Pryor and Robinson, probably not going to be looking at these guys. They don't have a B in any statistic. So that's going to wrap up the recruiting and the episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like and I will see you in episode two as we will take on UTEP and Oregon State. I will see you guys then. Take care.